Hello everyone and welcome to episode 7. In the previous parts we've been doing a lot of framework and setting up for the action RPG. In this part, because there's a few different directions we could go, we could keep building on the framework or we could do something a little bit more interesting, I decided to give my Patreon supporters a vote on what topic we should look at next. And by far, in the end, the winner was dialogue. So we're looking at how to create the dialogue and branching dialogue that we saw in the demo. Now, it's a, a tricky subject and it's going to take more than one episode to cover um, all the little sort of intricacies in that. Um, so in this first part, what we're going to do is just looking at setting up the text object that will render the text to the screen. Uh, it'll draw the text box, sort of animate it appearing, and be able to draw a message letter by letter. So I'm going to start by adding the macros and globals that we're going to need along the way. So I'm going to open the macro script, and I'm going to add two new macros that are going to be useful not just for this episode, but for a lot of things throughout our game. And the first one is going to be resolution underscore W. Um, we know by now the resolution of our game. Um, we decided on it very early on. It is 320 uh, by 180. So the width, uh, resolution underscore width, is going to be 320. And as you may guess, we're going to have a macro for the height as well. So resolution underscore H, uh, 180. So if at any point in time we do go insane and we decide we want to change the resolution of the game, we can pop into here to replace these figures rather than having to replace them all the way throughout the game because there's going to be plenty of times where we want to draw something relative to the screen or find a position relative to the screen where knowing these numbers is going to be very, very useful for us. Next up, we can close that and I'm going to open O Game and come to the Create event where we've got our, our couple of globals set up in here and I'm going to slot one more in uh, in between these two, kind of up near where just the variables will be at the top. I'm going to create a global called text speed and set it to uh, 0.75. Uh, in case you didn't know, um, and in a lot of programming languages actually, you can write a decimal number like that. Like, no, this is 0 0.75, you don't have to include the zero because the zero is just implied. If you don't put it there and you just put 0.75, just a quicker way of writing it if you're just dealing with a number between 0 and 1. That's the only global we're going to need for this particular tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and close O game now. And then I'm going to add a script um, that I'm actually going to import from the already completed project and I'll explain why in a second. So this script I've got here is called 9 slice box stretched. Uh, this might be familiar to some of you if you've watched my tutorial video on creating 9 slice boxes. Um, I think the tutorial is called UI slash UI boxes slash windows or something like that. If you want a really in-depth explanation of this script, you can go watch that video. I'll put like um, one of those cards in and I'll put a link in the description as well. But like that video itself was a 30 minute tutorial, so I wasn't going to go over all of this uh, in this one particular video. Uh, in short, what it does though is it's, you can see it takes a bunch of arguments in whenever we call the script um, for the coordinates of a box. And using those coordinates, it takes an image that you provide it and chops it up into nine pieces. So um, the, the four corners, the middle and the four edges uh, that will make up that box stretches out whatever's in the middle um, to cover the box, draws the four corners and uh, also draws the edges stretched out uh, to fit the box as well. So we can draw a box of any size using a single sprite to determine what it looks like. Speaking of that single sprite, we'll need to bring that in. So I'm going to create a new sprite, hit import, and I believe it, yeah, s text box, uh, s text box bg underscore strip four is the one from my um, assets folder. Uh, for those of you making your own and not using my assets, this is what it's like. We've got four different types of image in here for four different types of text box we might use throughout the game. Okay, this one here is for like uh, our save slots. Um, on the, the menu at the start, so we've got like selected and unselected, and these two are just two different types of dialogue box. This one's like for signposts, and this one's for um, like dialogue and like messages from NPCs and stuff like that. So you can see if I edit it and if I just bring up a grid, um, 
Uh, grid's always hard to see on. Let me just put this to I think it's 8 by 8. Um, can be hard to see on uh, <laughs> my my the resolution I'm recording this. It might not show up well in the video. But basically, I'll, I'll just draw it in real quickly and then just control Z it. But we've got like this kind of grid. Okay, so like taking our, our four corner pieces, four edge pieces, and the middle piece. Um, and we design it such a way that these like stretch outwards. Um, it has to be quite simple to work with this particular script. Uh, if you go watch the other video, I do show how to make a script that uses like more patterned ones as well. But basically these edges uh, here do have to basically be the same pixels all the way down. So like you're basically designing like this row and that, that's about it because that just gets stretched to the full size of the box. Okay. And in the middle, you can't really have anything but a solid color because it just takes the top left pixel. Um, and just stretches it out to fill um, the dialog box. The corners you can do pretty much whatever you want with because we just we just draw those um, as they are in place so those can be a bit more fancy and detailed if you want them to be. Okay and we also need to name this sprite of course uh, so I'm going to call it S text box BG uh, with that capitalization. Origin can stay in the top left and that's all we need to do with that. One other thing to remark about this script, um, just uh, I believe I mentioned this last episode, but just a reminder for anyone that might be using a future version of Game Maker, because we, we've all seen sort of the changes that have been announced by Yo-Yo Games, um, likely to be coming to uh, like version two, two point three or whatever, right? Might be two point four, I don't know, but whenever it comes, there will probably be changes to the way scripts work. It's possible, even very likely, that arguments will no longer be a thing in the same way and you'll have to sort of name them specifically per function and also that scripts will contain functions rather than being functions in their own right, okay? So you might have to end up doing something like, I don't know, function uh, 9 slice box stretched uh, open curly brace, close curly brace, like something like that, right? Um, around all this and then it'll work in the same way, okay? That's just me here trying to f <laughs> trying vainly to future-proof my videos against uh, uh, all of the, the crazy and, and very, very cool changes that will be coming to Game Maker in the future. Anyway, yeah, I'll make this as big as I can fit on the screen. Uh, something like that. Uh, pause the video now, get all this copied down. Or you can go and watch the other tutorial video if you want to hear about it more in depth. There's really not much more to it than what I've said though. Um, I've explained how it works I just don't want to go through in this video each one of these line by line because Look at all this. It's all just calculations to get the coordinates in the right places of the rectangle based on Whatever coordinates you've given. Okay, that, that's literally all there is to it. Okay, so I'm assuming you've done that I'm gonna make this smaller again bring back my UI and uh, close this down. All right, the next thing we want to do if we're going to be drawing text of any kind is add a font. We don't want to be drawing using just whatever Game Maker's default font is. Uh, so I'm going to create a new font. I'm going to call it F text because it's going to represent the text. Uh, uh, the font face I'm going to use for this is M5, M5X7. I'll include a link to this in the description, I'll probably put up another card thing as well. And if I bring this up to size 36, uh, you can see it's just kind of a, a simple pixel font made by Daniel Linson or Managor. Makes loads of cool game maker stuff, loads of really cool game jam games, loads of really cool stuff in general. Go check out his work. And this font is freeware, but he does ask for credit, so I'm giving the credit. Make sure you do too somewhere in your game if you're going to use this font as well. Okay, I'm not actually going to have it at size 36 because that would be massive. I'm going to set it to size 12 and I'm going to turn anti-aliasing off because it's a pixel font and we don't want to anti-alias it. We want it to be drawing sharp pixels at our very, very fine uh, pixel resolution. Then the next thing I'm going to do is make the text object. Uh, this object is going to be the blueprint for whenever we want to create a dialog box in the game. We're going to create an instance of the O text object. All right, so I'm going to make a new object and I'm going to call it O text. And then before we get started on anything, I'm going to come into our village, our village specifically, not the parent object, uh, the parent room, sorry. Go to the instances layer 
and just drop in a copy of this. And that's how we're going to test it. That obviously won't be how we use O text in the final game. We'll probably use a script that will create copies of O text, or sorry, create instances of O text whenever we want to draw a dialog box. But for now, just in order to test it, because uh, we can only do so much in one episode, uh, I'm just going to put an instance of this into our village so it'll just spawn a text box right away for us. All right, so back in that object now, O text, we'll add the create event as we usually do to start things off. And I'll maximize this, make the font nice and big. And the first thing I want to do is establish the um, coordinates of the text box. So I'm going to do that with an X1, uh, a Y1, an X2, and a Y2, all right? It's the simplest way to define the coordinates of a box. Um, two coordinates, essentially, the top left and the bottom right. And the uh, leftmost X coordinate is going to be our resolution width, uh, that macro we created earlier, divided by two, which is going to put it exactly in the center of the screen. And Y1 is going to be resolution H minus 70, so 70 pixels up from the bottom of the screen. Notice that these coordinates are screen relative and not room relative. Um, that's important for later. We'll, we're going to be using the draw GUI event, which draws relative to the screen or the game window and not your room. And uh, X2, so the far right coordinate, is actually going to be the same as X1 to begin with. Resolution W divided by 2. I'll explain that in a second. And the Y2, which is our bottommost uh, coordinate, is going to be resolution height. In other words, the bottom of our screen, right? 180. Now, you might be wondering why this isn't like the far left of the screen, like why it isn't zero, and why this isn't resolution width, as in the far right. They're both in the middle, so we've essentially created the coordinates of a line on the screen. And what we're going to do is animate the text box to grow out from that position uh, to fill the screen, all right? Meaning that's how our box is going to start. That's the initial coordinates of our box. And then to increase the width of that box over time, uh, we're going to have two target coordinates. So x1 target is going to equal zero. That's where x1 is eventually going to end up, all right? And x2 target is going to equal resolution width. And that's where x2 is eventually going to end up. A couple more variables we still need in here. Um, the first one is lerp progress. Um, as I just said, we're going to animate from being this sort of thin line to being a full wider rectangle. And lerp progress, or linear interpolation progress, is going to rep be a number between 0 and 1 that tells us how far along we are in that animation. Okay, so at 0, we haven't done any of it at all, and when this reaches 1, we will be at our target coordinates, all right? Uh, the next variable is a kind of similar thing, uh, text progress equals 0. Uh, rather than being a percentage, this is actually going to represent the number of characters that we're going to show in our message. So we're going to be increasing this every frame um, by our global text speed, which is 0.75, and we could always change that if we ever wanted to the text to scroll faster or slower. So like three three quarters of a character per frame are going to be added to this. Not that the decimals really matter, that just sort of affects the speed. Only every whole number is actually going to add another character to the message that we're going to draw. But basically this is how we're going to create that letter by letter effect, um, that, that typewriter effect, if you will, of slowly building up the message over time. The only other two variables are message, which is going to be the message that we want to draw. It won't by the end of the game be determined in the create event of this object. Um, it'll be when we call the script, we'll pass through the message that we want to display. But for now, we need something to display. So I'm going to write default message text. And then if we ever see that come up in the game, we probably know something's gone wrong because it's, it's not how we'll eventually be determining what the message will be. And finally, background equals zero. Again, won't be determined in the career event eventually, but uh, for now we needed to tell the object which uh, background to use for the text box. And that's which frame of this sprite we're gonna use, all right? Zero is just gonna be this first one, obviously. So zero, one, two, and three are the options that we have here. 
So back in OText now, I can go ahead and add the step event. So I'll right click in here, add open event, step, step. And we're gonna progress those two variables that we create to control the animation and the text character build up over time, okay? Uh, first of all, we'll control the animation. So lerp progress plus equal in order to add to it. Open brackets one minus lerp progress divided by 50. Okay, that creates kind of a simple tweening effect whereby we start off adding a 50th to lerp progress and that figure gets smaller and smaller and smaller as we get closer to one because again this is going to be between zero and one and then when it finally gets to one um, it kind of cancels itself out by doing one minus one being zero divided by 50, right? Um, so it'll never go over one, which is convenient. So it'll like start off quite quick and then just sort of slow a little towards the end as the amount it adds gets smaller with every frame. Text progress is gonna be a bit simpler. Uh, that's just gonna be, um, oh, let me spell it right to begin with. That's just gonna be itself plus global.text speed. So it's just gonna add 0.75 to itself every single frame. And now we know what those progress variables are, we can actually compute the results of it, okay? So our x1 is gonna equal lerp, open bracket, x1, x1 target uh, lerp progress. So if you're not familiar with the lerp function, it takes two values and gives you back a value that is a certain percentage between them. That's the easiest way to think of it anyway. It's short for linear interpolation, a weird word to use for that, but I guess it kind of makes sense. But the simplest way to think of it is we give it value one and value two, and then um, a percentage as represented uh, by a number between naught and one, and it gives you back a number that is that percentage between those two values. So if this were 0 0.5, it would give us a number that is 50% of the way between x1 and x uh, and x1 target. So when this starts at zero, um, it's basically just going to return the first value, x1. When it gets to 0 0.5, it'll be halfway between them. And when it gets to 1.0, it'll be x1. If it went over that, if it went all the way to like 2.0, it would be then like double the whatever the distance is between these two, like over the edge, right? It's very, very useful function. You can do a lot of cool things with it. But here we're just making a very simple sort of animation. Uh, all right, and then we want to do the same thing with x2. So x2 equals lerp, x2, x2 target, lerp progress. Close bracket, semicolon. Next, we're going to check to see if the spacebar has been pressed. And if it is and the message is over, we can uh, get rid of the object, uh, which will then let us move on to the next text object or, or whatever we want to do then. Be a whole bunch of things we want to add into it, but for now we're just going to destroy the text object. So if uh, keyboard uh, underscore check underscore pressed, open bracket VK space, close bracket, close bracket, open braces. And we won't just always destroy the message if, if we press the space bar because um, we don't know necessarily that the player's read it yet or that the whole message is on the screen. So we want to at least make sure the message is on the screen before we let the player close it down. So I'm going to get the message length with var underscore message length equals string length message, which gets back the length of that message in, t in number of characters. And then I want to write if text progress greater than or equal to message length. So if we're showing the whole message at this point in time, instance destroy, uh, open bracket, close bracket, semicolon. Else, open bracket, uh, if text progress greater than two, um, if basically if, uh, we haven't shown the whole message, but we're pressing space anyway. Uh, I'm assuming the user is kind of wanting to skip through the message a bit. So I'm going to accelerate the message by just setting text progress to then equal message length. Um, you don't have to wrap this in an if text progress greater than two thing. Um, you could just do it whenever, but I like to make sure, like I, I, this is a fairly arbitrary amount, but I like to make sure that if they press it in the very first frame or the first couple of frames of the message um, that it doesn't do anything that it doesn't skip the whole message. So the user just has to wait a little bit. I think that helps prevent unwanted presses sometimes. It's a kind of a preferential design thing up to you really. 
I like to have it there, but this is this if bit is kind of optional. Either way though, what you want to do if you want to skip and show the whole message before closing it, you want to write text progress equals uh, message length. All right, just set text progress to be the full length of the message so it'll start showing it all. And then if you pressed space twice in a row, it would like, first of all, show the whole message and then close the message down. All right, it just gives us that ability to sort of skip through dialogue nice and quick. All right, so once you close that bracket, that's everything we need for the step event. That's progressing everything. So all the variables are in place. We have all the variables to calculate the position of the text box and how far along the message is drawn and so on. Now we just need to get to the fun part, which is drawing the result of that. So I'm going to add the draw draw GUI event. Okay, very specifically the draw GUI event, not the regular draw event. Um, I guess we can give this a description of draw text box because that's all we're going to do in here. And the first thing I'm going to do is call that script or that function that we made earlier. So nine slice box stretched turns yellow. Open bracket. You can see from the way I declared it, I've got these um, down here so I can, we can see what we need to put into this. That's uh, the sprite of the text box, which is x uh, s text box bg, and then the four coordinates that we have from earlier. So x1, uh, y1, x2, and y2. The last argument that we need to supply the script is the index, that's just the frame uh, whichever frame that we want to use on here from 0 to 4. We know what that is from earlier. That's what we declared in the create event as background equals 0. And if we ever want to change it, we can change that variable. So we just pass through that variable background, close bracket, uh, semicolon. Next, we just want to set our drawing tools up for drawing text. So I'm going to do draw set font to be f text, draw set hline to be f a center, that's our horizontal alignment, draw set v align to be fa top, draw set color to be c underscore black. These are all just sort of constant assignments. These four things you kind of want to do every time you draw text, all right? It's very good practice to make sure you call these each time you want to draw text. Try not to just rely on whatever was set before it. It's a very easy way to run into problems where if you say you set this up in one draw event and then you made another and you just drew the text and it's relying on the fact that you set this up in another object, uh, then you create another object that runs its code in between those two objects and suddenly uh, your last object is drawing its text way differently, you don't want to run into problems like that. So just for the best practice, just make sure you call these four things before you ever draw any text. Can really help to put these into a script or a function. So you can just call one uh, script. I usually have one called draw set text and then you just put like f text, fa center and so on. You put those four things in and it will just call those four functions for you. So you can do it in one line. Very good idea, but either way, just make sure you do those four things. The reason we're going to draw it in black, first of all, is we're going to draw it like a little shadow effect. So we'll draw the text twice, draw it once slightly offset in black, and then once in the correct position in white. So we get a little little offset shadow. But before we do that, we need to actually get the message that we want to display to the screen. So I'm going to type var underscore print. That's going to contain the message that we want to, the final message that we want to draw, and it's going to equal string underscore copy open bracket message one text progress. Okay, so this function takes a string that we give it, so message is our full message. Index is where we want to start copying from, so we're just starting from the, the very first character. You do type one in this case, not zero, and then text progress uh, contains the number of characters that we want to copy. Okay, and that's the, the final thing you have to pass into this. So we're going to copy a chunk of a message, depending how far along text progress is, and put that string into underscore print. And that's how our text builds up over time. Then finally, finally, we can just draw the text. So draw underscore text, open bracket, and then we just have to give the coordinates where we want to draw it. We want to draw it uh, to keep things simple, just in the center of the text box for now. We could look at other things later on for drawing things horizontally or even drawing things character by character if you want to do uh, fancy effects. That's typically how you do it if you, you want, you're wanting to know how you create uh, text boxes where like you color individual words or make 
uh, individual words animate and so on. It's a fairly popular thing to want to be able to do, but that requires a lot more work and it's probably not something we're going to cover in the initial series. So we're just going to draw this whole string for now. And the position we're going to draw it is just in the center of the text box aligned to the top. All right, so top down from the center. So to get the center position, we can simply provide um, x1 uh, plus x2 divided by 2. All right, so that's our text box position uh, divided by 2, you know, gives us the middle. Uh, then the y position is just going to be y1, which is the top of the text box, plus 8 just a arbitrary buffer amount. You might want to put that into like a macro or something. Up to you really, I'm just going to use arbitrary numbers. I don't really mind hard coding this. We're only going to have fairly simple text boxes for this particular game, so I don't mind hard coding a few things. And then finally, the message that we want to print, which is underscore print. Then one pixel uh, above that, so it'll be y1 plus seven, we're going to draw the text again, but in white. So draw, set, a color, open bracket c underscore white, close bracket semicolon, draw text, same coordinates for the x, x1 plus x2 divided by 2, uh, y1 plus 7. Uh, you can also try this with like um, that plus 1 as well if you want to um, draw it at more of an angle, up to you. Um, I'm kind of happy with just the shadow being uh, one pixel below the text itself. Uh, and then obviously again, a comma, underscore, print, close bracket, semicolon. All right, that's everything. There will be a slight problem with this, um, but I'm gonna run it just to demonstrate. When we come in now, you see the text message is drawn in this tiny box in the corner. It all worked, the animation worked and everything, um, but you can see it's it's completely out. It's not, it's, the resolution is off from the game. It doesn't match up to anything. Um, and that's because and it looks similar, but maybe slightly different on your screen, depending on your monitor resolution. But for me, a resolution of 320 by 180 is this amount of space. And when we resize the game window right at the start of the game, what happens is GameMaker sets the application surface, the main surface to which everything is drawn, um, to a resolution equal to the window size which is a problem for us because our window size is much bigger than our game's actual resolution. So when it comes to actually drawing things like this, um, we've got way more pixels than we actually want. So I'm going to close this and come to O game and the create event. And just before we go to um, our new room at the bottom here, I'm going to add the line surface underscore resize. Something a lot of people don't know is that the application surface is just a surface and you can use the surface functions on it. So I'm going to do surface resize application underscore surface and set the width and height of the surface to be our resolution. So resolution underscore W and resolution underscore H. Close bracket semicolon. Okay, just so you can see that there. So that'll set the application surface to be the defined resolutions that we came up with and not just whatever size the window happens to be when we launch it. Because we resized that so that we could see it a bit better because obviously we've got a small resolution game, but we want a bigger window. So by doing that, we keep the size of the surface the same as our target resolution. So if I run the game now, the text box comes up and it's properly sized to our game. You can see it's got a default message text and if I press space uh, it gets rid of it and you can see it like you can see that animation is working just fine if I just quick, quick quickly restart the game it scrolls up stops at the full nice width and the text is animating letter by letter. Um, a little bit hard to see because if uh, because this message is actually quite quick and it's, it's not very long but if I press space real quick you can see it skips uh, like the drawing part and skips all the way to the end and if I press space again it closes it down right okay you'll notice obviously we're uh, like rolling and stuff when we do that um, something we need to do is make it so that when we create a text object the player loses control uh, you can see I can move around while we've got like a text message on the screen so obviously we'll want to avoid that but that'll probably come in when it comes to creating the script that actually creates our message 
as I said, this is a, a topic that's going to require a couple of episodes, uh, maybe two, maybe three, to get the whole system in. But um, hopefully you're satisfied with this as the starting point. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned a lot from this one, and I'll see you all in episode eight. Here are all my Patreons. They are great. Here are some particularly great people in no particular order. Annabal Rivera, Arrow Barbarian, Bailey Raid, Bowser the Dog, Bertie T, Cabbage Pants, Daka Dondigo, Dark Rider 0318, do what do be. Figgy. Gargoyle Drake. Gilberto Cisneros. Hare. Hyungjin. James L. Anderson. James Siggins. Jason. Kevin Sheaves. Leo. Maria Celeste Oliveira Freeling. Mark. Max M. Pixel Mush. Relentless Rex. Rene Dam. Robert Churches. Rovan Darlin. Run. Rupinda. Scott Matthews. Showcontact. Samian Yayalegaglow. T. Lesson. Travis Womack. Tyler Hubble. Zaki, Zephyr Flame, and Zinan May. Thank you all so much, you're the best. Next episode, as always, will be available next Friday. Hope to see you all then. Thanks guys, catch you all next time.